Hi, welcome to another video. So, Gemini Code Assist has kept shipping updates pretty much every week since mid-August. And if you're curious about what changed after August 15th, I'm going to walk you through all the new stuff in order, starting from late August and going all the way to the latest October release. There's a lot here, especially if you're using VS Code or IntelliJ, and Agent Mode has become a lot more central, which is kind of cool. The big headline is that you now get deeper project awareness, better diffs, smarter previews, and some quality of life fixes that make day-to-day -day coding less annoying. All right, let's jump in, and I'll show you what's new and how to use it. So, starting from August 26th, there's a small but important change in telemetry behavior for the VS Code extension. Gemini Code Assist telemetry settings now override the VS Code telemetry toggle. Basically, if you've turned on logs in Gemini Code Assist, it'll collect telemetry even if VS Code's own telemetry is off. It's not a flashy feature, but it matters for admins and teams who care about auditing and diagnostics. On August 27th and 29th, we got two really practical upgrades around context. First, they rolled out full remote code base awareness. Basically, what it does is let the chat understand your entire remote repo, not just the open files. You can ask broad questions like, what does this repository do? And it pulls from the full context, which is quite awesome for onboarding or understanding legacy projects. Alongside that, code customization now understands your internal Markdown docs. If you store architecture notes or run books in Markdown, it can use those for answers. I mean, I liked it. It's very similar to the better rag setups we've seen elsewhere. And for me, it reduces the back and forth where the assistant would otherwise miss project-specific conventions. The flip side, though, is that you'll want to be thoughtful about what repos are indexed and who has access. So there's that. Jumping to September 3rd, there's a neat UX trick. You can mention a remote repository with at in your prompt to prioritize context. So, if you work across multiple repos, say a backend in Go and a frontend in TypeScript, you can force the assistant to focus on the repo you actually care about at that moment, which is kind of cool. There's also a usage dashboard as of September 4th. You can monitor org-level usage with a pre-built dashboard, things like activity volumes and trends. So if you're an admin or a team lead, it's useful to see whether adoption is rising or if certain teams are hammering it. September 9th brought two good IntelliJ additions. You can attach terminal output directly to chat, and you can regenerate the most recent prompt. Attaching terminal output is great for debugging build failures, flaky tests, or CLI errors. You just paste the output, and it can reason about it. Regenerate is basic, but essential. When the first pass misses the mark, you hit regenerate and get a fresh answer. On September 10th, VS Code's agent mode got a hands-on upgrade. There's a custom slash command called forward slash deploy for Cloud Run that lets you deploy your existing web app straight from agent mode. It handles building, containerizing, pushing, and wiring up the service, then gives you a public URL. That's pretty awesome for quick demos or internal previews. The only caveat is you need to install the Cloud Run MCP server and turn on agent mode. Once you do that, just type slash deploy and watch it go. It's very similar to how some CLI helpers like NPX Vercel feel, opinionated and fast. From September 11th, VS Code got a bunch of chat workflow polish. You can edit a prior prompt and regenerate the response based on your edits. You can regenerate your latest response directly, and you can delete a single prompt slash response pair without wiping your whole chat history. 
and they introduced release channels so you can opt into preview to get new features sooner or stick to GA if you want the SLA and stability. At launch, the channels were identical, but the idea is you won't have to sign up all over the place to test new capabilities, which is quite awesome for teams that like living on the edge while keeping defaults sane. On September 18th, there's a pair of updates for VS Code. First, you'll see a one-time banner telling you that code customization got enabled for you. Handy, so you know the model is using your org's code base. Second, you can check the current status by clicking the Gemini icon, which saves you from wondering whether your requests are using the right context. September 23rd is a big day. Inline diff is now generally available in VS Code, and it's really good. Edits are highlighted inline, green additions, red deletions, so you can review changes without leaving your current editor view. For me, this is one of those features that actually gets used every hour. It's a huge productivity boost for integrating generated code safely. IntelliJ also got revert to a checkpoint in GA, so you can roll back affected files to the state before suggestions were applied. Plus, you can access saved prompts in the prompt library by typing at and selecting, which is awesome for repeatable workflows. Stuff like add logging or write unit tests, lives as saved prompts now. There's also a small but useful sign-in tweak. You can copy the sign-in link and paste it manually in your browser, which helps in lockdown environments. On September 26th, VS Code 2.51.0 added Next Edit Predictions in Preview. Basically, it predicts upcoming code suggestions throughout the file you're in. You can cycle through choices, dismiss them, or ignore and keep typing. I've tried it, and it's kind of cool for boilerplate-heavy files, like big React forms or verbose configuration. It's not perfect, and sometimes it's overeager. But when it nails the next block, you save a bunch of keystrokes. September also had a VS Code 2.50.0 and IntelliJ 1.31.3 maintenance vibe with performance and stability improvements. But the big story is the Polish and GA of diffs and checkpoints. If you are an avid watcher of this channel, You'll know I keep banging on about diff-first acceptance. It limits risky merges, and this is a solid implementation. Now, into early October, this is where things start shifting toward agent mode becoming the standard. On October 2nd, tools were deprecated and replaced by agent mode in preview. After October 14th, using a tool name won't connect to the old tools. Instead, agent mode can connect to external services through MCP servers. The good news is, MCP is becoming a common pattern. You've seen it with Claude and other ecosystems, which means more uniform integrations. The bummer is, if you relied on the older tool's shortcut, you'll need to upgrade your workflow to agent mode and configure MCP servers. So, there's a small migration tax, but long-term, it's cleaner. On October 8th, IntelliJ 1.33.1 added two things. First, next edit predictions arrived in IntelliJ in preview, the same inline foresight you saw in VS Code, now on JetBrains. Again, I'd use it for repetitive structures. If you're writing a lot of Kotlin or Java service boilerplate, this can be pretty good. Second, Chat code suggestions now display inside a preview block by default, which improves readability a ton. You can skim suggestions faster, and it generally looks nicer in the panel. It's a simple UX change, but honestly, it's the kind of thing you feel every day. All right, let me show you a quick walkthrough of a few of these. Inline diff 
lays out edits in the editor with green additions and red deletions. Suggestions stack inline so you can skim, accept a single chunk, or apply all without leaving the file. Checkpoint indicator shows up alongside the chat. One click on Revert takes your files back to the exact state before the AI edits, which is something I have really wanted. Chat code shows up in a clean preview block. Collapsed or expanded is configurable in settings, so skimming longer snippets is much easier. The at picker lets you prioritize context to a specific remote repository. Select it, and responses focus on that repo immediately, which is kind of cool when you work across services. If you have the cloud stuff configured, then Usage Dashboard opens a simple view of org-level metrics, requests, adoption trends, whatnot, handy for leads to check activity. Next, Edit Predictions shows a little badge in the gutter. Cycle through upcoming blocks, accept, dismiss, or just ignore and keep coding. Very useful for boilerplate-heavy files. Quick Preview lists multi-file chat suggestions in one place. Click any file, and it jumps there with the first suggestion highlighted. Full remote code base awareness lets you ask broad repo questions and get answers that reference the whole remote. Markdown Docs indexing pulls in ADRS and runbooks so responses align with your internal conventions. Tools deprecation notice explains that tool name goes away after October 14th. Agent mode uses MCP servers for integrations going forward. Status chip for code customization appears once when enabled. Clicking the Gemini icon shows a clear on-off readout so you know it's active. That's the flyover. Agent mode for complex tasks, inline diff and checkpoints for safe edits, preview blocks for readability, context control with at mentions, and MCP-backed integrations. Honestly, an insanely good set of upgrades. I really liked the direction. Agent mode plus, better diffs, plus smarter context is a strong combo. The GA of inline diff and checkpoints makes everyday edits safer while the preview stuff like Next Edit Predictions shows where this is going. If you're on IntelliJ, the preview block for chat responses is a small change that pays dividends. And for Teams, the console-level code customization and repo groups are genuinely useful. I really liked it and have been using it. That's why I thought to share it with you guys as well. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.